You know, I think more than anything, the reason that I'm here was because I will find a way. You know, I might not be the most talented. It might not be the same path that everybody else has, but I will find a way. Kurt Warner, a capable backup, but certainly not where Trent Green is. Yeah, and with all due respect, it's a pretty sizable drop-off. I thought that maybe my last opportunity to get into the NFL had just taken place. We will rally around Kurt Warner, and we'll play good football. I love you, too. Thanks for the team. <laughs> Woo! You are special. Bagging groceries to the NFL MVP and an eventual Super Bowl champion, all in the short span of a few years and being an inspiration to countless football fans along the way. But the one problem with Happily Ever After, especially in Hollywood movies, is life tends to continue after Happily Ever After. So what happens after Kurt Warner's championship run? What happens to the greatest show on turf? It may not look like it right now, but Kurt Warner has been part of some of the biggest moments in NFL history, and without the once 27-year-old rookie, there's no telling how different the NFL would look without him. So what happened after Kurt Warner's iconic championship that featured him in American Underdog, and how does the story continue? Break. Following the fact that he was the last MVP to win the Super Bowl at that point in NFL history, Kurt Warner signed a huge seven-year contract worth $47 million, including an $11.5 million signing bonus. Immediately after signing this deal going into the 2000 season, Kurt Warner would pick off where he and The Greatest Show on Turf left off. The Greatest Show on Turf was an offense that consisted of legendary receivers Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce, along with Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk. Kurt Warner would throw for over 300 yards in each of the team's first six games as he helped the St. Louis Rams start 6-0 and would begin the season red hot. However, midway through the seventh game of the season, Kurt Warner would break his hand and backup QB Trent Green would substitute in for Kurt Warner. Green would end up losing that game and three more as a starter that season. However, he would post a touchdown to interception ratio of just over three to one with 16 touchdowns to just five interceptions. And at this point had proved that the greatest show on turf was capable of performing at a high level with another quarterback at the helm. Kurt Warner would come back after missing just five games and finish the season with the tendency to turn the ball over a little too much as he threw just 21 touchdowns to 18 interceptions. These turnover woes wouldn't stop there as he would end up throwing three more interceptions against the New Orleans Saints in the wild card round that year. The St. Louis Rams would lose in the wild card 31 to 28. Kurt Warner had looked nothing like the MVP we all saw a year prior and at this point the 1999 season was starting to look like a bit of a fluke, but no one would predict what was to come next season. Going into the 2001 NFL season, Kurt Warner would once again lead the St. Louis Rams to another 6 to nothing start. However, this time he wouldn't get hurt, and even though he was still turning the ball over a little bit more than you'd like, he was throwing more yards than ever before, and for the third season in a row would have the St. Louis Rams ranked as the best offense in all of football. Kurt Warner tossed a career-high 4,830 yards on a career-high completion percentage of 68%, and even threw a league-leading 36 touchdowns to boot while leading his team to a 14-2 record. The MVP was back. Even after winning a Super Bowl and a MVP just two years prior, we clearly hadn't seen the best from the general of the greatest show on turf. Going into the 2001 playoffs, the St. Louis Rams were looking to replicate their 1999 playoff run, and they did for the first two games, as Brett Favre threw six interceptions in a 45-17 St. Louis Rams blowout victory over the Green Bay Packers, which would be followed by a tremendous game from Marshall Falk that would feature a 150-yard two-touch touchdown performance against the Philadelphia Eagles to clinch a victory in the NFC Championship game. 
This matched up an already been there champion in Kurt Warner against a young second year quarterback that had a underdog story of his own by the name of Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. That's right, that Tom Brady, the one that would go on to appear in nine more Super Bowls and to win seven, including his very first one against Kurt Warner in 2001, where Warner tossed a pair of interceptions as the St. Louis Rams lost 20 to 17. Although Kurt would lose this Super Bowl, his loss simultaneously birthed the legend of another Hall of Fame quarterback, who many consider as the greatest of all time, and he would play for multiple decades to come. And this is where things started to get a little dark for Kurt. You see, going into year three of Kurt Warner's seven-year contract, coming off of two MVPs in three seasons, a lot was expected from the MVP Kurt Warner and the greatest show on turf that had led the NFL in almost every single offensive category for the last three seasons. During the beginning of the 2002 NFL season, Kurt Warner and the St. Louis Rams had started off with zero wins and three losses, and Warner had thrown a total of seven interceptions in those games. And benching the reigning MVP was simply out of the question for head coach Mike Martz, who at the time was vehemently loyal to the quarterback. However, that decision was taken out of his hands in week four as Kurt Warner broke a finger on his right hand. As a result, backup quarterback Mark Bulger was forced to play. And when he did play, he played well and led the team to victories. Bulger was 6-0 as a starter and threw over 400 more yards and 11 more touchdowns and 5 less interceptions than Warner in just 4 less passing attempts. After this, Mike Martz wasn't so confident in the reigning MVP and saw that multiple quarterbacks were capable of having success in his system. Kurt Warner, Trent Green, and now Mark Bulger. At the beginning of the 2002 season, Kurt Warner was named the starter of the St. Louis Rams going into week one. However, after fumbling the football six times and losing 23 to 13 against the New York Giants in the season opener, quarterback Mark Bulger would go on to start for the St. Louis Rams the rest of the season and led the team to a 12 and four record, a division championship, and even his first career Pro Bowl. Following the 2002 NFL season, Kurt Warner was cut with three years left in his contract thus concluding his legendary Rams stint, which included two MVPs, over 100 passing touchdowns, and captain of possibly one of the greatest offenses in NFL history to win a Super Bowl. Shortly after being cut by the St. Louis Rams just a few days later, Kurt Warner signed a one-year contract worth $3 million with the New York Giants, and was mainly brought in to mentor young rookie quarterback and future two-time Super Bowl champion Eli Manning. It's safe to say that sitting behind and watching a two-time MVP and Super Bowl champion in practice every day your rookie season would probably have a positive effect on you. But don't take it from me, take it from Eli Manning himself, who's even thanked Kurt publicly on Twitter, saying, thanks for being such a class act and great mentor for me. Kurt Warner had gone 5-2 and two in his first seven starts and had managed to lead the New York Giants to an early playoff push. However, after a two-game slide to fall to 5-4, and four, Kurt Warner was benched more so in favor of the potential of Eli Manning, rather than Manning being the better quarterback. The Giants' record was 1-5 under Eli Manning, finishing 6-10 that season. Kurt Warner was clearly the better quarterback, and although on paper it may have just seemed like a one-year stint for Kurt in New York, in reality it was just a priceless stay that helped teach Eli Manning the skills to go on to win two Super Bowls, one with his first coming just three seasons later. For the 2005 NFL season, Kurt Warner would again sign a one-year contract, this time paying him $4 million with the Arizona Cardinals, and had won the quarterback battle between himself and journeyman quarterback Josh McCown in training camp. The Cardinals lacked talent, only having second-year wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald, who would break out this season leading the NFL in receptions with some help from Kurt Warner. After the first three games, Kurt Warner had injured his groin and was forced to miss two weeks due to the injury. In that time, Josh McCown had played the greatest games of his life, passing for a combined four touchdowns and over 770 passing yards. That's nearly 400 yards per game. Due to McCown having the hot hand, Kurt Warner remained on the bench until McCown inevitably fell back down to earth, and that's what would happen. Kurt Warner would sign with the Arizona Cardinals on a three-year contract worth up to $24 million in incentives. 
But during the NFL draft, the Arizona Cardinals publicly made aware that the old offensive general wasn't their future at the quarterback position and ended up drafting the 2004 Heisman Trophy winner, USC quarterback Matt Leinart, who fell into their laps at the 10th overall pick. And I'll tell you another thing, what quarterback wouldn't want to throw the football to Larry Fitzgerald? That is a haven for a quarterback to come in. Leinart gets some heat, goes down into the corner, touchdown! This guy always found a way to win. He's in the end zone, touchdown USC! Matt Leinart is one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time. Leinart bumps it, going deep. Kerry Colbert, got it! The championships, the Heisman Trophy, the winning streak, Let's dream up of who else goes in that class because I'm they're not immediately coming to mind. Liner was brought in to eventually succeed Kurt Warner to be the franchise quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals. And once again, Kurt Warner was in a situation where he was mentoring a future NFL great, a can't miss prospect that came out of a pro offense that won the 2004 Heisman Trophy. This selection of Matt Liner would put tremendous pressure on Kurt to succeed immediately. And most analysts expected Matt Liner to be the starting quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals sooner rather than later. And once again, Kurt Warner was in a situation where he was mentoring a future NFL great, a can't-miss prospect that came out of a pro offense that won the 2004 Heisman Trophy. But since Kurt Warner has been doing this since the beginning of his career, he once again proved the analysts wrong. In week one, Kurt Warner won NFC Offensive Player of the Week, throwing 300 yards and three touchdowns against the San Francisco 49ers. However, as the season continued, Warner's performances diminished, and in week four, mid-game, Warner was replaced with rookie quarterback Matt Leiner. After the game, coach Dennis Green said that Kurt Warner would be the backup for the rest of the season, and the Cardinals ended up winning just three games under Leiner, as the Cardinals finished 5-11 that season. Going into the 2007 NFL season, for what felt like the 100th time, analysts had pretty much written off Kurt Warner. He was named the backup to Matt Leiner by new head coach Ken Wisenhunt, and it seemed like the days of the 36-year-old starting were way behind him. However, in week three against the Baltimore Ravens, as Matt Leiner had been playing terribly all season, including this game, Kurt Warner had been called in to relieve the former USC quarterback in the fourth quarter, entering at a 23-6 deficit. But by the time the play clock striked all zeros, Kurt Warner had his team back to tie the game 23-23. Although the Cardinals would eventually lose in overtime, Kurt Warner proved that he could still be an elite signal caller, and with the proper pieces surrounding him, would put up a lot of points very fast, which was a foreshadowing of what was to come. And after week four, he would remain the starter for the rest of the season. In just 11 starts that season, Kurt Warner had managed to throw 27 touchdowns to 17 interceptions on just over 3,400 passing yards. The now 37-year-old signal caller was still lighting up box scores and even managed to win five games and proved that he could still lead teams to victories even as an old man in the league. Going into the 2008 NFL season, just before the preseason, third-year quarterback Matt Leinart was given every single opportunity to win the starting job over old man Kurt Warner. And in his 10th season in the NFL, Warner had officially won yet another quarterback battle to be the starting quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals. I lost all my confidence in Arizona, all of it. When Kurt took over, I just thought I was always looking over my shoulder. I never felt comfortable there. Part of my fault probably and part of just the situation I was in. And boy, what a season it was for Warner and the Cardinals. Kurt Warner threw the third most touchdowns in the NFL that season with 30. He would throw less interceptions than he did a year prior with 14, and had tied his career completion percentage from almost a decade before as he completed 67% of his passes. The highlight of the season for Kurt Warner would be in week 14, as Kurt Warner would face his old team in the Rams and Mark Bolger, who was the man who took his starting job in St. Louis. The Cardinals won 34-10 as Kurt Warner threw for over 250 yards and a touchdown as the Cardinals stamped their ticket to the playoffs. 
Going into the NFC Championship game, the Cardinals faced the Donovan McNabb-led Eagles, who gave the Cardinals everything they could handle, as Donovan McNabb threw three touchdowns, but that couldn't stop Kurt Warner from throwing four touchdown passes of his own, and having a 145 passer rating, all while leading his team past the Philadelphia Eagles 32-25 to play in the Super Bowl against young rising star quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger had already won a Super Bowl a few years prior, and the young phenom quarterback knew what it took to win the big game. With that being said, so did Kurt Warner. Up to this point, Kurt Warner had played in two Super Bowls, winning one. Kurt Warner tossed nearly 400 yards, three touchdowns, and maybe one of the biggest interceptions in football history, a 100-yard pick six to James Harrison that shifted momentum to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the end of the first half. Even after valiantly fighting back in the second half, where the Cardinals forced a safety, Kurt Warner would toss a go-ahead 64-yard touchdown to Larry Fitzgerald before Big Ben led one of the most heroic game-winning drives in Super Bowl history, highlighted by one of the most iconic receptions by Santonio Holmes to seal the game. Once again, as Kurt Warner loses yet another championship, Ben Roethlisberger, a young generational quarterback, had just added his second Super Bowl ring to his young, impressive resume. After the 2008 heartbreak, Kurt Warner signed with the Cardinals on a two-year $20 million contract for the 2009 season and was automatically named the starting QB over Matt Leinart. In 2009, Kurt Warner posted impressive stats for a 38-year-old quarterback, throwing for 26 touchdowns and 14 interceptions, and just over 3,700 passing yards, all while leading his team to a NFC West divisional title with a 10-6 record. In the wildcard round, Aaron Rodgers and Kurt Warner had an epic shootout and played one of the most entertaining wildcard playoff games to date, as Kurt Warner threw five touchdowns and almost 400 passing yards as the Arizona Cardinals beat the Green Bay Packers 51-45 in an overtime shootout. But going into the divisional round against the eventual Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints, Kurt Warner threw an interception and would get replaced by Matt Leinart before the game ended, as the Cardinals ended up losing 45-4 and this would be the final time Kurt Warner would suit up in Cardinal Red. In January of 2010, shortly after the end of the NFL season, Kurt Warner announced his retirement from the NFL, thus ending an illustrious 12-year career, too often simply highlighted by his early Super Bowl victory. It wasn't just the one championship that made Kurt Warner so great. His resilience to continue to play, to continue to find a home to thrive in, is what made him so special. Kurt Warner was successful in multiple cities, and his ability ability to reach the Super Bowl in two separate cities proves it, and this just adds to his astounding resume. In 2017, Kurt Warner was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and was officially recognized by his peers as one of the greatest to ever play the game of football. In Kurt Warner's Hall of Fame speech, he said, I learned to welcome the challenges in life, because it's where our best is often revealed. It taught me that through discipline and dedication, your greatest weaknesses can be your greatest strengths. Kurt Warner turned all of his weaknesses into his strengths.